everyone. Welcome to a video which I'm dedicating to this rare and interesting trace of the history of furniture from the city of Lyon. Now, Lyon is more renowned for its furniture production during the 18th century, but this is an eccentric and atypical example of art furniture which was still being made in the middle of the 19th century. Now, this is a point in time when most furniture has become industrialized and when it is no longer really interesting to us today as collectors. That doesn't mean that there aren't exceptions to the rule such as a piece like this by the relatively unknown firm Dove and Dumaret. Now, although we don't know about them much today, in 1855 they won the World's Fair gold medal for furniture, specifically for their pieces like this one, which open automatically at the turn of a key. There, there's a patented, or was then patented, mechanism inside which deploys the writing surface automatically. And so the inside of the desk is in a mottled maple or a bird's eye maple, which is the contrast to the exterior, which is itself a walnut typical of the city of Lyon, but very atypical in a sense that here we see an elaborate burled veneer, which really pushes the wood to the height of its aesthetic. Now, here's where you would have kept your letters and such, but it's quite typical that the inside of these desks will be the opposite in color scheme of the outside. So these drawers here, now that one was locked, but I unlocked it for a reason I'll get to in a second. These drawers here do not appear to lock, but the automatically opening writing surface is not the only mechanism that Dobe and Dumeret included in this piece. If you open this drawer, which itself does lock, you will have access to a couple of levers inside. Pushing one up locks the exterior, the, the outer drawers. Unfortunately though, if you want to get into the drawers now that they are locked by the hidden lever, the wood has shrunk a fair bit over 170 years, so all you need to do is to tap it and then, well, then you have access to, you know, all of the finery that someone would store in here. So here's one of the levers, and so lifting this up will block the back of the drawer and perhaps there were springs there in the past. I figured there must have been some other part of the mechanism to make it work, but I think it's really just this little lever, which was perfectly sized at the time to lock that door. Now, as I mentioned earlier, when you place the drawer here and you reach inside to activate the lever, it does block the drawer, but all one needs to do is tap the drawer and then it will open. So I'm sure at the time it was such a perfect fit that you couldn't just tap here and deactivate the lever. One would have had to remove this drawer that we're putting back now, um, which itself could be locked. But in terms of its state of conservation, state of preservation, the thing that's most charming about this piece is that it has managed to retain the original 170 year old pieces of glass. And so that is why when we move the camera across the glass, we'll see this nice rippled effect. But really, I, I thought it would be good to make a video just to preserve this piece because there really aren't very many traces of the work of this small but fairly distinguished firm, which operated for 20 or 30 years in the city of Lyon. And so this isn't an exhibition quality piece. But in a way, it's more interesting because it showcases sort of the finest domestic level of reasonable furniture that you could have acquired from them. You know, these pieces that are in the Chateau de Compiègne, which are made by Dobé and Dumeret, they, they were the jewelry cabinets of, of an empress, you know, so there's nothing approachable about them. And so I like furniture in terms of furniture history, which is still furniture, meaning there's a domestic and approachable intimate quality to it still opens the secretary automatically at the turn of the key. Two turns of the key.